Hmm, can we estimate how many ships and airplanes were lost in the Bermuda Triangle? Have their disappearances resulted from human error or weather phenomena? Let's try to find out. We have a curious story of the SS Cotopaxi. This ship vanished in 1925, traveling from Charleston, South Carolina to Havana, Cuba. It never reached its destination. Years later, in the 1980s, a wreck was found 40 miles off St. Augustine, Florida. Since specialists could not precisely determine what and where it came from, they nicknamed it Bear Wreck. It took many additional years of work, done mainly by marine biologists, to identify that this ship was indeed the missing SS Cotopaxi. This was confirmed in January 2020. How did the ship just reappear? And how did it get there, since this mysterious shipwreck isn't even in the Bermuda Triangle? Now, let's see who came up with this term, Bermuda Triangle. Can you actually pinpoint the triangle on a map? No, it's not an officially recognized location either. The Bermuda Triangle does not appear on any world map. Nobody has agreed on its exact boundaries. There are only assumptions with approximations of the entire area, ranging between 500,000 and 1.5 million square miles. By all approximations, the region has a vaguely triangular shape. In 1964, an American author named Vincent Hayes Gaddis first came up with the idea when writing an article for Argosy magazine. He used the Bermuda Triangle to describe a triangular region that has destroyed hundreds of ships and planes without a trace. It is pretty hard to get the number of lost ships and planes because some ships and aircraft have gone missing without leaving a trace. Their wreckage in the region has not been recovered. But the recorded story should help us. Legends about the Bermuda Triangle date back to the 15th century like that of the Italian explorer Christopher Columbus. When sailing through the Atlantic waters, he passed by this location in the late 1400s. In what we now know as the Bermuda Triangle, he saw a huge flame that seemed to just crash into the ocean. Later, he saw an unusual light flashing in the distance at the exact location. Like many other sailors since then, his compass had severe malfunctions. Flight 19, a Navy plane on a routine schedule back in 1945, also started the Bermuda Triangle legend. It was commanded by Lieutenant Charles Taylor, and it's recorded that he just got lost in the triangle for no reason. Since pilots had no GPS back then, they had to trust their compasses and keep track of how long they'd been flying in a specific direction and their speed. Shortly after completing the task, both of the compasses on board stopped working correctly. Records found after the plane's disappearance also indicate that Taylor didn't have a watch on that particular day. The initial report stated that pilot error was to blame for this unfortunate event. However, because people weren't satisfied with this outcome, it was changed to causes or reasons unknown after several reviews. One surviving pilot named Bruce Guerin suggested he went through an electronic fog while passing above the triangle, making him travel through time. In 1970, when this incident happened, he was flying his aircraft when it was surrounded by two huge clouds that formed a whirlpool and spiral. Like many others before him, he noticed that his navigation devices were malfunctioning. When he eventually made it out of those clouds, he discovered that his flight had only taken 35 minutes. It should have taken 75 in total. Since he had no other reasonable explanation for what he went through, he believed he must have been pushed forward in time. It's not only strange-looking clouds that have been seen above the Bermuda Triangle. In 2014, a pilot recalled almost colliding with a flying object that he could not identify whatsoever. Some of these strange encounters were even caught on tape. It's the case of an early 2015 flight whose passengers noticed a curious object just floating over the ocean. The pilots have yet to figure out what they actually saw back there. Okay, not all of the possible explanations have been this unusual. Oceanographers, for example, have also tried to explain why ships disappear around here. So they recently came back to one of their old theories rogue waves. These are immense walls of water that just pop up suddenly. 
if multiple such waves rise simultaneously, they overlap like a wave sandwich. If one single wave can reach over 30 feet tall and happen simultaneously, it can create a rogue wave that can surpass 100 feet high. These types of waves can quickly overtake even the biggest of ships. Meteorologists came up with their own explanation too – hexagonal clouds. These unusual types of clouds can generate winds of up to 170 miles per hour. And they're pretty significant too – some reaching 20 to 55 miles across. As such, waves inside these wind giants can go as high as 45 feet. The Earth's own magnetic force might also have something to do with it. Within the Bermuda Triangle, compasses point to true north, the geographic north pole, rather than magnetic north, the shifting magnetic north pole. Some have even explained that since these two perfectly overlap in the Bermuda Triangle, it can cause a magnetic phenomenon that could make navigational devices malfunction. It's called the agonic line. The problem is that scientists have discovered that this line moves each year. It might have passed through the Bermuda Triangle at one point, but it's now through the Gulf of Mexico. Other strange natural phenomenon found along the coast of Norway could help explain why the Bermuda Triangle has claimed so many ships. There are some deep craters there, measuring up to half a mile wide and are 150 feet deep. Scientists believe they were created by methane gas bubbles. This gas seems to be leaking from deposits hidden deep in the seabed. Once the gas reaches a certain quantity, it bursts to the surface and causes eruptions. So, do pilots and ship captains actually avoid this area today? Could this explain why there are fewer ships that get lost there nowadays? But if you've ever flown from Miami to San Juan, Puerto Rico, you probably know that's not true. As for ships, if people would avoid the Bermuda Triangle, nearly all Caribbean vacations would be spoiled. To this day, there are a lot of flights that go over the Bermuda Triangle, so it's clear nobody is avoiding it. This place is one of the most heavily traveled shipping lanes in the world. Nowadays, the Bermuda Triangle has heavy daily traffic, both by sea and air. But the Bermuda Triangle is indeed subject to tropical storms and hurricanes that happen very often. Let's also keep in mind that the Gulf Stream, a strong ocean current that causes sharp changes in local weather, passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Besides, the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, the Milwaukee Depth, is also located in the Bermuda Triangle. The Puerto Rico Trench reaches almost 27,500 feet at the Milwaukee Depth. So, if you think about it, the whole mystery is a perfect combination of human error, bad weather, and a lot of ship traffic. This was confirmed by data provided by the U.S. Coast Guard. If you look at percentages, the number of ships or planes that go missing in the Bermuda Triangle isn't different from anywhere else. Disappearances do not happen more often than in any comparable region of the Atlantic Ocean. Official statistics say around 50 ships and 20 airplanes have vanished while traveling through this region. So that's another reason why the total number is so hard to pinpoint. Nobody could describe its rescue in official records if a boat was reported missing. There were also some events that, it turns out, didn't happen at all, adding to those false reports. Like that of a plane crash back in 1937 off Daytona Beach, Florida that local papers surprisingly revealed nothing about. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. As you probably know, the Bermuda Triangle is situated near the Bahama Islands. There's a strange structure around the bottom of the islands. The bottom of the ocean here is inconsistent. Every now and then, some otherwise sandy floor is replaced by giant dark holes like a living place for some giant eel. The most common problem with those caverns, named blue holes, 
is that sometimes, tidal waves can make them produce vortices and whirlpools. Experienced divers say that they're like waterfalls in the middle of the sea. In March 1918, carrying a crew of 306 people, the USS Cyclops left Barbados and headed home to Baltimore. The ship passed through the Bermuda Triangle on its journey and was never seen again. The Cyclops never issued any distress signal and disappeared without any explanation, making it the largest ship to go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. No wreckage has ever been found. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. A lot of Bermuda Triangle stories feature reports, allegedly received from missing aircraft and ships. There are reports about strange cloud formations, tunnels in the air or above water, or the sudden appearance of thick fog sparkling with electric lights. As legend suggests, some of these anomalies are not only capable of completely disorienting any vessel, but also removing them from where they were altogether. Some enthusiasts of this theory draw a line between it and the experimentations of Joseph Hutchinson, who is trying to prove that electromagnetic fields can collide with each other and produce all kinds of disturbances to reality itself. He's done countless experiments in which electromagnetic fields were able to make objects levitate, fly out of the water, and begin to illuminate. Hutchinson himself thinks that similar things may have their place in special places like the Bermuda Triangle. There are some strange structures lying at the bottom of this eerie area. Some even reported the presence of giant pyramids here. In reality, the only giant things here are overstatements. The structures don't look like pyramids at all. They are called the Bimini Road. It lies northwest of the shore of North Bimini Island. In fact, it consists of two strange rock formations. Both look suspiciously like building blocks. Research showed that underlying ground layers beneath the Bimini Road feature nothing but bedrock, with no possible cavities in it. That totally excludes any possibility of these rocks being part of a building. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the U.S. on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure. William Shakespeare's famous play, The Tempest, was inspired by the Bermuda Triangle. Sailors returned home to England to tell stories of treacherous waters near the Bahamas where ships mysteriously disappeared. These stories made it back to the bard himself and inspired his final play about a storm at sea transporting a ship to a mysterious land. The shipwreck in Shakespeare's play is based on the 17th century ship Sea Venture. The ship was carrying supplies from England to Virginia when it was struck by a massive storm in the Bermuda Triangle. Sea Venture was battered by the storm for three days and barely made it to the shore. Survivors of the wreck were stranded on a desolate stretch of Bermuda for nine months. The floor of the ocean in the area is littered with shipwrecks from all over the world and of all ages. And, as you can imagine, this is a sweet spot for treasure hunters brave enough to challenge the mysterious waters of this place. One of these treasure hunters was lucky enough to come across a secret map made from the orbit of the planet in the 60s during one of the first flights into space. This map reveals a lot of shipwreck coordinates in the Caribbean area. The luckiest treasure hunter in the world believed that these coordinates should lead to the remains of the ship that was part of Christopher Columbus's expedition. What he found there was a huge, unidentifiable object plastered with layers and layers of coral. It had long protrusions sticking out of it in bunches of five in different directions. Two more identical objects were found nearby. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maru 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. 
After this incident, the Japanese authorities label the area a danger zone, and sailors are encouraged to avoid it. The local people of Andros Island, part of the Bahamas, have a legend in their folklore about a giant, vile, octopus-like creature named Luska. Nobody knows how big this creature could be, but they believe it is responsible for the disappearance of vessels in the area. Strangely enough, some giant octopuses were seen and even caught nearby, though they weren't nearly as big as the legendary creature. On the other hand, a giant octopus capable of dragging ships to rock bottom? Hmm, none have grown to a size this big as far as we know, so this version doesn't seem too concerning. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the rare places on the planet where True North and the Magnetic One are in the exact same direction. True North is the geographical north pole of our planet. Magnetic North directs to the North Magnetic Pole, which constantly wanders around the Earth. Sometimes these poles coincide, and the straight line that connects north and south is called the agonic line. If you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. It won't point exactly to the north. Astronauts of the International Space Station notice the Earth's magnetic field is weakened in the Bermuda Triangle area. This field is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. Above the triangle, the particles of the sun's rays move faster than in any other part of the planet. This causes unstable work of electronics of satellites flying in the atmosphere of Earth. It doesn't apply to ships and planes, though. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large, unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Alaska has its own triangle. Since the late 80s, 16,000 people have disappeared there. Eyewitnesses to the Bermuda Triangle anomaly talk about thick fog, lightning, balls of light, and hallucinations. In Alaska, everything's a bit more complicated. People, planes, ships, they just disappear without a trace. There's no one around to tell us what it felt like. In 1950, a plane took off from Anchorage, Alaska, headed for Great Falls in Montana. It was carrying eight crew members and 36 passengers. Two hours after the start of the flight, the captain radioed that everything was fine. And then, silence. The 100-foot-long plane seemed to evaporate into thin air. 85 aircraft and around 7,000 people searched for the plane. No trace. Not even a screw, bolt, nothing. That plane mystery made the Alaskan Triangle famous. If you look on a map, it's a wild and mostly unpopulated zone that passes near Anchorage, Barrow, and Juneau. Hey, I didn't know about the Alaskan Triangle. Juneau? Yeah, that must be an old joke. December 4, 1970. Pilot Bruce Gernon had two passengers on board his Beechcraft Bonanza single-engine aircraft, his father and business partner. They took off from Andros Island in the Bahamas and headed northwest for the Florida coast. Sure, they were in the infamous Bermuda Triangle's airspace, but this was a typical flight Bruce had made dozens of times before. The trip usually took about an hour and a half with no hiccups whatsoever. Bruce took off and started gaining altitude. Strange things started happening right from the get-go. At first, he noticed a small cloud up ahead, but it kept growing. Not from the plane getting closer, this thing was actually getting bigger in size. Bruce had to fly through it, and he came out the other end just fine. He gained altitude, and yet another mysterious cloud appeared. This one was massive, and Bruce had no other choice but to fly through it too. At that moment, it got dark as night all around the aircraft. But this wasn't a storm cloud, and it wasn't raining. Bruce was starting to get worried, and then... BAM! 
Bam! He saw flashes of white light. Bruce kept flying for another 30 minutes when he realized this was the same cloud he had gone through earlier when he started to climb. But now the cloud was cylindrical and the plane was flying through its center. It was wide and seemed endless. Bruce thought he could never get out of that trap. But a minute later, he saw light at the end of the tunnel. But all of a sudden, the walls of the cloud tunnel began to narrow. They were closing in on the plane. The navigational instruments started wigging out. The compass was spinning by itself counterclockwise. The walls kept narrowing, smaller and smaller, wrapping like a vortex. The electrical instruments still going haywire. Bruce was running out of time. He had to get out of this place fast. A grueling 20 seconds later, he burst out of this foggy trap. As Bruce described later, he felt weightless for five seconds as his plane left the tunnel. The clouds dispersed, and now the aircraft was in a grayish haze. The men let out a big sigh of relief. He immediately grabbed the radio and contacted ground control to determine his location. But when the dispatcher looked at the green screen, his face became contorted with confusion. Bruce's plane wasn't on the radar. It was as if the thing was invisible. But then the dispatcher said the aircraft was already in Miami airspace. Bruce was utterly shocked. It just couldn't be true. Remember, the whole trip usually took around 90 minutes. But this time, it took just 47 minutes to get to the destination. His plane didn't magically gain some supersonic speed beyond the model's limited max cruising speed. This was physically impossible. The dispatcher must have made a mistake. But when the clouds parted, Bruce saw that he really was over Miami. The plane landed safely, and it was time to try and solve this mystery. Bruce checked the remaining fuel and his watch. After a short calculation, he was only more confused. The plane hadn't gone through the amount of fuel it should have. Archive records show that 84 sunspots were recorded that day, as well as a huge solar wind. This would cause disturbances in the Earth's magnetosphere that could throw off the plane's instruments and radars. But so far, no one has been able to explain how the plane got to Miami so fast. Maybe in the future, the truth will be revealed. In the meantime, it remains another mysterious riddle of the Bermuda Triangle. If you draw up a map, trace a line connecting the island of Bermuda, Puerto Rico, Miami, and back to Bermuda, what do you get? The infamous triangle, known for swallowing thousands of ships and aircraft over the centuries. But there's a new mystery to this already enigmatic place. Something's lurking deep in the waters below, and it's leaving bizarre clues of its existence. Splash! Your submarine hits the water surface. You descend 100, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 feet. It's getting darker. The sub's walls creak as the pressure grows. Over 1,400 PSI. It's like the weight of a grand piano squeezing every square inch of your body from all sides. You've made it to your destination. All that's left is to spot the beast. Just in time, among the black void, you see a bright green glow off in the distance. It's getting closer. As it approaches, it gets bigger. This is it, the creature that's been leaving strange circular markings on fish, dolphins, whales, and even other sharks. Behold, the cookie cutter shark. Don't let its size fool you. It may be no longer than a bowling pin, but this creature is a parasite. It attaches itself to other marine animals using its neatly arranged serrated teeth. With one bite, it fills its belly detaches, and goes on about its day. Its mobile snack also swims away with its life. The only evidence of this rendezvous, a cookie-shaped mark on its body. Don't assume you're safe in your submarine. These bold little guys have been known to go after subs, too. You decide not to risk the shark punching a hole in the only thing keeping you from being squished to a pulp by the surrounding water. You journey on to meet other bizarre creatures lurking in the Bermuda Triangle. At twice the depth, you'll find the dragonfish. Unlike other deep water inhabitants, these things produce light in the infrared range. Blue and green is what other fish stick to. 
this gives the dragonfish a huge advantage. It provides itself with light that other marine dwellers just can't perceive. Things that want to eat the dragonfish can't detect this light, as well as the critters the dragonfish likes to feed on. A truly unique deep sea dweller is the vampire squid. Neither vampire nor squid, or octopus, this thing is a unique species of its own. It has the largest eyes compared to body size of any animal on the entire planet. When the vampire squid feels threatened, it curls its arms up and around its body. Essentially, the thing turns itself inside out. Another animal to avoid down here is the terrifying bobbit worm. It buries itself in the sea floor, leaving a small part of its body out. It waits for dinner time with its pincer-like mouth parts open. What's on the menu? Other worms and fish that can be seven times bigger than the bobbit. It uses its five antennas to sense when lunch is close enough to snap. In an instant, the worm launches forward and grabs its lunch with its mouth parts. It's not done yet. Once it's got its jaws locked onto its lunch, the worm injects it with venom and pulls it down into the burrow to feast. One of the deepest trenches in the Bermuda Triangle is the tongue of the ocean. This is also the secret breeding grounds of tiger sharks. You'll instantly recognize them thanks to those darker gray tiger stripes on their sides. They're the second largest predatory shark species after the great white. And with a big size comes a big appetite. Marine mammals, smaller sharks, stingrays, and green turtles are all on the menu. If you ever come face to face with a tiger shark, hopefully not, remember this. You can tell the fish's age by looking at its stripes. They fade over time, so the younger the shark, the more pronounced its stripes. There's plenty of zooplankton in the Bermuda Triangle. These are, usually, small organisms that are essential to the ocean's food chain. But get this, if nothing ate them and they were left to grow out of control, zooplankton would cover the entire world in layers and layers in just four months. Oh, and the largest type of zooplankton is the jellyfish. Jellyfish were around long before dinosaurs. You probably know your body is 60% water. A jellyfish is 95%. So if it gets washed onto the shore, after a few hours, most of its body just evaporates into the air. There's also a jellyfish that lives forever. The immortal jellyfish can revert itself back to its polyp stage and then grow again. Sounds like something from another planet, but it's no space jelly. Those do exist, by the way. Back in the 1990s, NASA raised jellyfish in space to see what zero gravity does to them. They were just fine living up there in the cosmos. When they came back down to Earth, though, they had trouble adjusting. The European eel hasn't been to space, but it is quite a globetrotter. It travels all the way from Europe to the Sargasso Sea, where the Bermuda Triangle is located. In the larval stage, it just drifts around the ocean for as long as three years sometimes. It's also the chameleon of the sea. Over the years, the European eel changes color, going from translucent to yellow to metallic silver. They're nocturnal and secretive, pretty much the ideal companion to have when you raid the fridge at midnight. A giant squid over half the length of a football field once washed up on a Florida beach. Researchers suspected this behemoth came from the Atlantic Ocean near the Bermuda Triangle. Giant squids are the longest invertebrates, meaning they have no backbone. They also have the biggest eyes on Earth, ever. They're as large as a soccer ball. Another creature found near the Bermuda Triangle is Starer's cave shrimp. They were so good at keeping to themselves that no one knew these creatures even existed until 2011. Some female cave shrimps carry an impressive number of eggs along with them. Scientists discovered one female had around 2,000 eggs attached to her body. The Bermuda petrel is the national bird of, yes, you guessed it, Bermuda. It's the second rarest seabird on the planet. In fact, 
people thought it was extinct until 1951, when they spotted a few on the island. It has an eerie cry that'll send shivers down your spine. The Nassau grouper can only be found on the coasts of South Florida. This fish lies in wait and ambushes its lunch of other fish, crabs, and lobsters. It's sort of like a vacuum cleaner because it inhales its food through its huge mouth. The fish has a cool defense mechanism too. Like the chameleon, it changes color when it feels it's in danger. Sometimes it takes on a lighter or darker shade of its own color to blend in with the environment. So you may spot a Nassau grouper, or you may not. If you happen to visit the Bermuda Triangle, you'll probably see a hammerhead shark. They use that iconic hammer-shaped head to pin their lunch, stingrays, onto the ocean floor. The shape of their head also gives them better vision. They can see almost 360 degrees all around, above and below them. Well, save for one blind spot right in front of their nose. The hawksbill sea turtle may not look intimidating, but this guy will eat anything it can get its bird-like beak around. Sea sponges, algae, and even venomous jellyfish. A lot of the stuff on their menu is inedible for most, but their body fat can absorb the venom and toxins, so they go unscathed. The Bermuda Triangle is also home to green glowworms. They're not really worms, but larvae. They produce that bright light from an organ near their tail. This light makes smaller creatures come toward them, making it easy for them to catch their lunch. Most of the time, they look pretty ordinary, but they have an oddly fixed schedule. Every third night, after the full moon, during the summer, at an exact time, the glowworm lights up. But back to more nightmarish creatures of the Bermuda Triangle, there's the goblin shark, known as a living fossil because it's the only one left of its animal family. It's only about the length of your forearm and looks like nothing special. But watch closely as its lunch gets too close. Boom! The shark's jaw shoots out of its mouth and grabs onto the unlucky creature. Once the teeth have locked in, the jaw goes right back in the shark's mouth. And yes, you share the planet with this thing. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he'd ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. 
Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maru 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone, and sailors were encouraged to avoid it. Some people blame all disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Bermuda area. This gas tends to set off, and when it happens, bubbles start forming on the surface of the water. These gas eruptions can interrupt the ability to float and can easily sink a ship. Because of this chemical reaction, there won't be even a trace left. Underwater volcanoes are said to be another possible explanation for the Japanese Dragon's Triangle. In fact, they can take down even small islands. Luckily, nobody lives there. It's a pretty common thing in this area that some of them disappear underwater and others appear out of the blue because of seismic activity. You'll never find the Dragon's Triangle on any official map of the world, so nobody's quite sure about how large it is in reality. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. Previously, the compass wouldn't work well in the Bermuda Triangle since the lines of the two poles coincided here – true north and magnetic north. But if you fall into this line, your compass will behave strangely. But the magnetic north is constantly shifting, and now it's far beyond the triangle. No legend says pirates of the last centuries operate in the Bermuda Triangle or that the Flying Dutchman makes other ships disappear. A popular theory is that ships travel to the distant past or future through a time portal in the Bermuda Triangle. Fortunately, these are all myths. Just imagine hundreds of giant tentacles reaching out to a group of ships sailing through the Bermuda Triangle. In the past centuries, they could easily sink an entire fleet since the ships were made of wood and were lighter. Squids wrapped decks with their strong tentacles, made holes in the ship's hulls with their sharp beaks. Toothy suction cups could break the masts and tear the sails. The water was filling the holds and slowly rising to the deck. The ship sank in a matter of minutes. Survivors reached the shore and told everyone about huge monsters. This is how the legends of the Kraken appeared. Fortunately, now people have sonars and equipment for monitoring the sea space. They say the main reason why this place is so enigmatic must be the magnetic fields that form this ominous triangle. Ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to the high concentration of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot.
magnetic fields tend to shift their position, so do tectonic plates and even the continents, even though we never notice it. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Seems like the Bermuda Triangle has an alternate not only on Earth, but even in space. Spacecraft usually don't disappear into thin air, though, like there's no air. This anomalous area is really large and stretches right above the South Atlantic. It occupies the area from Chile to Zimbabwe and sits right at the point where Van Allen radiation belts are the closest to the surface of our planet. The Earth has two such belts, which come in handy trapping the particles that shoot in from the Sun. They do a great job protecting the Earth from radiation. The magnetic field there is lower, so it allows the Earth's radiation belt to come closer to the surface. Whenever a satellite passes by, it will be exposed to radiation, which might lead to serious damage. So no satellite can take pictures of it. The South Atlantic anomaly is part of the Earth where natural radiation just flows out of control. Still, there is little evidence that all these triangles are really dangerous. Many believe the Bermuda Triangle itself has been proven time and again to be nothing but a work of fiction. In fact, some shipwrecks, such as the Ellen Austin, gained popularity in the middle of the 20th century, while nobody even thought of drawing a triangle in the Bermuda area before that. The mystery was popularized by science fiction writers and became a common myth, while no serious research proved it any more dangerous than other parts of the world's ocean. So, the crew of the Ellen Austin back in 1881 weren't even aware of the Bermuda Triangle back then, let alone afraid of it. What do you think? Its ruins lie somewhere in the darkness of the ocean depths, covered in seaweed, damaged by the ravages of time. The city of Atlantis allegedly existed 12,000 years ago. Then it sank, and over centuries, people have been passing stories about it. Many think it was just a regular island, but so many legends tell about a powerful empire. Atlantis supposedly was one of the wealthiest and most fascinating cities of its time. Your breath would have been taken away if you had stepped through its central gate. Amazing decorations and towering marble statues were all over the place. The rumor has it, the entire city is under the water now. Some people believe that it's on the seabed somewhere in the Bermuda Triangle. Some even claim that an underwater pyramid in the Atlantic is somehow responsible for all those planes, people, and boats that mysteriously disappear there, and no one can track them later. The story says that in the late 1960s, there was a group of treasure hunters that came across the ruins of an ancient city. It happened during one of their diving expeditions in the Bermuda region off the coast of Miami. They spoke about the intriguing remains of the city and mentioned a glass pyramid they also stumbled upon there. They claimed it was bigger than any other pyramid, even those discovered in Egypt. Of course, those were just stories. But unusual things do happen in that area. For example, volatile water currents or a strong vortex that occurs from time to time. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the best spots for researchers to explore. They go there to study minerals, the seabed, and the Gulf Stream. They study how the ocean influences weather. The geological structure of the planet's crust deep down under the ocean floor is especially interesting. The deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean lies in the Bermuda Triangle. Researchers have done a lot of studies and drilling there to find out what lies a couple of miles beneath the seabed in that area. There's an awesome variety of seabed landforms in the Bermuda Triangle. You can hardly see anything like that anywhere else on Earth, especially if you keep in mind that this is a relatively small ocean region. Look at this shelf with shallow banks. There are also plateaus, plains, and deep sea trenches. If you believe the Bermuda Triangle is some sort of a trap, you're not wrong, considering its complex geological structure. There are a couple of groups of seamounts in the eastern and northern regions of the Triangle. They're mostly unnamed. Some of them are up to 650 feet high. At such heights, 
they would be considered regular hills on the surface. But by ocean standards, these so-called underwater hills are like small mountains. They're either elliptical or round. You can see that if you take a look from above. There are more seamounts in the Pacific than in the Atlantic Ocean. The underwater world in the Atlantic is less diverse than in the Pacific, unless we're talking about the Bermuda Triangle. The limestone platform that forms the bottom of the triangle is nearly 3.7 miles deep. And this entire thick layer consists of the remains of small ancient creatures. In 2019, a big group of geologists published an article where they claim that the triangle formed as a result of strong volcanic activity. For years, people believed there were ancient long extinct volcanoes that brought the Bermuda Islands from the sea bottom. So, one theory says the Bermuda Islands formed because there were disruptions in magma flows. Pieces of ancient plates that were already in the mantle went up to the surface, and then they mixed. That's how many volcanic islands in the oceans could form. Knowing this, science fiction writers let their imagination run wild. They told stories about scary creatures and mystical cities, or islands, hidden deep down beneath all those layers. All these mysterious stories encourage people to create their own theories. In the 15th century, a well-known man named Christopher Columbus was on what would later become one of the greatest and most important expeditions ever. He was one of the first people to tell stories about a mysterious region that was later called the Bermuda Triangle. This area was first known as the Summers Isles, named after British naval hero and privateer George Summers. But Spanish explorer Juan de Bermudez discovered the island in 1505, and that's when the area got the name it has today. So, Columbus mentioned some pretty strange sightings within the area, starting with a light similar to that of a candle moving up and down in the distance. He immediately warned his crew and asked them to look at the light, which kept vanishing and reappearing. He spoke about stars that seemed to move around in the sky. The needle of their compass went crazy too. But the most unusual thing he claimed he had seen was an unknown glowing object coming out of the sea and shooting toward the sky. Many people these days believe there was nothing really unusual there. Those must have been lights coming from another ship or from the shore. But Bermuda intrigues us today too. It's a roughly triangular area where ships disappear without any trace. Sometimes they show up later, but empty and with not a single person on board. But more often, no one ever finds their wrecks. And it's not just ships, planes go missing too. The training sailing ship HMS Atalanta was one of the first cases in the string of mysteries of the Bermuda Triangle. The ship left a dockyard in Bermuda and headed in the direction of England back in 1880. It never reached the British Isles. It actually never even left the Bermuda region. It just went missing, and no one ever found any trace of it. Some said the ship disappeared because of a powerful storm they came across on their route. The crew members probably didn't have enough experience to handle such a situation. Back then, everyone wanted to know what had happened to the ship. How could it just disappear like that? It made headlines. People were coming up with all kinds of possible theories about what could have happened. The story continued with the coal carrier Cyclops. In 1918, it sailed off the island of Barbados, and after a couple of days, the situation repeated. The ship disappeared without a trace, along with more than 300 people on board. Three years later, in 1921, a Coast Guard on the Diamond Shoals near Cape Hatteras, North Carolina, discovered a massive commercial ship that ran aground. The guard was prepared to help people in trouble, but they had no one to save. The ship was empty. None of the passengers or crew members were there. Some theories about this accident included pirates, but no one really found out what had happened. Flight 19 turned out to be one of the most famous incidents in that area. An entire group of aircraft disappeared in the area in 1945. A further rescue expedition didn't go well either, because one of the mariners with 13 crew members also went missing. And it's not that such things only happened a long time ago. 
A 29-foot-long ship with 20 people on board went missing a day after it was due to arrive at Lake Worth, Florida. There were neither any records of the ship nor any distress signal. The search mission involved boats and aircraft and lasted 84 hours. The rescue team covered an area that was nearly two times the size of the entire state of Massachusetts, but still nothing. The Bermuda Triangle is a place of great mystery, but the islands are a perfect spot for travelers. It's an excellent place if you're into golfing, for example. So if you're lucky, you might easily run into some famous golf players or celebrities while there. And here's something interesting for music fans. John Lennon got inspiration for nearly 25 of his songs on one of these fascinating islands. What's the most mysterious and blood-chilling place on Earth? The first thing that comes to mind is most likely the infamous Bermuda Triangle. This area has earned its spooky reputation after swallowing numerous ships and airplanes, which then disappeared without a trace. But is this place really so terrifying? Let's ask scientists. But first, I'll tell you a story or two. One of the most infamous disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle was Mary Celeste. The ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean on December 4, 1872. It was days after its journey began. Captain Benjamin Briggs with his wife and a two-year-old daughter were heading from New York to Genoa in Italy with some important cargo. Besides the family of the captain, there were seven other crew members on board the ship. Days later, a British ship, De Gradia, came across Mary Celeste by accident. Strangely, the ship was floating under a partial sail. Everything on board was intact. There was nothing strange with this situation, except for one thing. There was nobody on board the ship, and the lifeboat was missing. There were no traces of people on the ship. It couldn't be a pirate attack since all the belongings of the crew, as well as the cargo, were untouched. Theories like an undersea earthquake, an attack of a giant squid, or a natural disaster can be ruled out as well. They just don't fit. It was a clear day. The ship was in perfect condition. Why would people leave it and never come back? Whatever the reason, neither the crew nor the lifeboat has ever been found. It was November 29, 1925, when the SS Cotopaxi left Charleston, South Carolina and headed for Havana, Cuba, carrying a big load of coal and 32 crew members. The story has it that several days later, the steamer ran into a severe storm, got water in its hold, and started to list dramatically. On December 1st, the ship sent out a distress call, and since then, nothing has been heard from the crew ever again. The ship was believed to have vanished into thin air until it was found 95 years later. Scientists found SS Cotopaxi, and it turned out there was nothing mysterious about its story. At the moment, the ship lies at the bottom of the ocean, about 35 miles away from St. Augustine, Florida. Researchers are also sure that the ship did send a distress signal during a storm, which most likely led to the sinking of the vessel. USS Cyclops was a huge carrier ship that used to supply fuel to the American fleet. On January 8, 1918, heavy and full of manganese ores, the ship departed from Rio de Janeiro and headed for Baltimore. Being only a couple of years old, the ship wasn't supposed to experience any problems. All 309 people on board felt safe and calm. But this feeling turned out to be deceptive because somewhere around March 4, 1918, the ship disappeared into thin air without sending a distress call or indicating it was having problems in any other way. In the history of the U.S. Navy, this case remains the accident that caused the largest loss of life at a time. SS El Faro was a much more recent disappearance. This cargo ship left Jacksonville, Florida on October 1, 2015 with 33 crew members and tons of vehicles, trailers, and containers on board. The huge vessel was supposed to deliver its load to Puerto Rico, but something went wrong. A regular tropical storm that started miles away suddenly transformed into a powerful hurricane that rushed towards El Faro. 
it started to circle around the cargo ship, making the communication from the vessel go silent. But the most shocking thing was that after causing all this commotion, the hurricane miraculously retreated in the same direction it had come from. Weeks later, after a thorough and extensive search, rescuers finally located the ship. It was still in one piece and sitting upright on the bottom at a depth of 15,000 feet. But the blood-chilling truth was that there was no trace of the crew members on board. As for airplanes, probably the most inexplicable disappearance happened on December 5, 1945. This case got the name The Lost Patrol. Flight 19 was the code name for five planes that departed from a naval base in Florida on a training flight. No one knows for sure what happened to the planes, but they never returned to the base. Most experts believe the commander of this group, Charles Taylor, got lost and led the planes in the wrong direction. Those were the machines that could land on water. So hypothetically, after getting low on fuel, the pilots could ditch and wait for help, rocking on the surface of the ocean. But it didn't happen. Although, two rescue Martin Mariner planes were searching the area all through the night and the next day. They found no trace of the five disappeared planes. But the most spine-chilling coincidence was that one of the rescue planes failed to return to the base as well. All six planes vanished into thin air, as if they had never existed. There have been several other plane disappearances when aircraft went off radars and never returned. In some cases, pilots had to send out a mayday distress call. In others, they disappeared in the blink of an eye when everything seemed to be going perfectly fine. Of course, over the years, there have been loads of theories trying to explain the phenomenon of the Bermuda Triangle. For example, some researchers believe that ships and planes crash and disappear in the area due to methane gas. And it has indeed been proven that in some areas of the ocean floor, there are massive storages of this gas. Therefore, when gas gets released into the water, the process can sink ships and make planes crash. Potentially, it can happen so fast that a craft in distress doesn't even have time to send SOS. The theory of a wormhole is preferred by those who love sci-fi. In short, a wormhole is a space-time shortcut. While the existence of wormholes hasn't been proven yet, this doesn't stop some people from believing that this phenomenon is what causes vanishings in the Bermuda Triangle. Another sci-fi theory is based on the interface of space civilizations. It's quite convenient to blame such disappearances on extraterrestrial forces. Though why they would choose exactly this area for their abductions remains unknown. Water spouts, or simpler, tornadoes in the ocean, are said to have been spotted in the Bermuda Triangle. This weather phenomenon raises water many feet up into the air. Potentially, this can make a ship disappear with ease. The human error theory may sound rather disappointing for those who love mysteries, but some are sure that all the crashes and disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle happen due to people's mistakes. There are too many confusing islands that are hard to distinguish from one another, as well as difficult weather conditions there. And now, let's see what modern-day scientists have to say. Disappointingly, they claim there is no mystery in the Bermuda Triangle, whatsoever. The loss and disappearance of planes and ships is just a fact of probabilities. Researchers are sure that there's no evidence that in the Bermuda Triangle, mysterious events occur more often than in any other well-traveled large region of the ocean. The sheer volume of all that traffic in an area that is pretty hard to navigate gives us such unsettling statistics. But on a percentage basis, the number of vessels and aircraft missing in the Bermuda Triangle is the same as anywhere else in the world. And what theory do you believe? In 1945, 
five TBF Avenger aircraft took flight for a routine training exercise around the Bermuda Triangle. In the middle of the exercise, the planes were struck by intense rain and heavy winds, despite the clear weather forecast. The pilots became extremely disoriented and radioed the base to report that their navigational equipment had stopped working. The last thing the base heard was, when the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we all go down together. And then, static. The five planes and their 14 passengers were never seen or heard from again. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. In March 1918, carrying a crew of 306 people, the USS Cyclops left Barbados and headed home to Baltimore. The ship passed through the Bermuda Triangle on its journey and was never seen again. The Cyclops never issued any distress signal and disappeared without any explanation, making it the largest ship to go missing in the Bermuda Triangle. No wreckage has ever been found. No one exactly knows how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the U.S. on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure. William Shakespeare's famous play, The Tempest, was inspired by the Bermuda Triangle. Sailors returned home to England to tell stories of treacherous waters near the Bahamas where ships mysteriously disappeared. These stories made it back to the bard himself and inspired his final play about a storm at sea transporting a ship to a mysterious land. The shipwreck in Shakespeare's play is based on the 17th century ship Sea Venture. The ship was carrying supplies from England to Virginia when it was struck by a massive storm in the Bermuda Triangle. Sea Venture was battered by the storm for three days and barely made it to the shore. Survivors of the wreck were stranded on a desolate stretch of Bermuda for nine months. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. A huge investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. Because the Bermuda Triangle isn't a recognized place, no one knows its exact location or size. Some people believe it covers around 500,000 square miles around the Bermuda area. Other people believe the triangle is as big as 1.5 million square miles. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the Bermuda Triangle mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. The Bermuda Triangle is home to the deepest point in the Atlantic Ocean, the Milwaukee Deep. The area has a maximum depth of over 27,000 feet. This is one of the deepest points in the ocean floor, but still not close to the massive 35,000 feet of the Mariana Trench. But the huge depth might explain how such little wreckage has been found. 
the Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. In the year 1800 again, the ship USS Insurgent was on patrol when it stopped briefly at a coastal base before heading back out to sea. That was the last time USS Insurgent was ever seen. A severe storm reportedly struck the West Indies around that time. It's believed that storm was so powerful, it could have caused the sinking of both the USS Insurgent and USS Pickering, which vanished around the same time. Like the Pickering, no wreckage of the Insurgent was ever discovered. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves that reach up to 100 feet tall. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. Joshua Slocum was an extremely talented sailor. He was the first person to ever sail single-handedly around the world. But sadly, he was no match for the Bermuda Triangle. In November 1909, Slocum said goodbye to his wife and set off on one of his usual winter voyages to the West Indies. Slocum's wife reported him missing after several months passed without any contact. It's said that he called in at Miami to resupply before vanishing into the Bermuda Triangle. Just off the coast of Japan, you'll find the Bermuda Triangle of the Pacific Ocean. They call it the Dragon's Triangle. Between 1950 and 1954, nine ships disappeared in this area without leaving a trace. The ship Kayo Maru 5 was sent to investigate these unexplained disappearances when it also vanished. After this incident, the Japanese authorities labeled the area as a danger zone, and sailors are encouraged to avoid it. On the ocean floor, decomposing organisms let off large concentrations of methane gas that gets trapped under the water. This gas can build up until, boom, it ruptures. The gas surges up to the surface and erupts. If a ship was in the area of one of these ruptures, the water would become much less dense and cause the ship to sink rapidly and without warning. Scientists believe this could be the cause of the many disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. While this theory makes a lot of sense, it doesn't seem too likely. The United States Geological Survey has stated that no large releases of gas are believed to have occurred in the Bermuda Triangle for the past 15,000 years. In July 2015, two teenagers disappeared after setting sail off the coast of Florida. There's some mystery about what the two teens were really getting up to. They told their parents that they were just going to fish, but they told their friends that they were crossing to the Bahamas. Shortly after they left, a line of thunderstorms moved towards the area, and the boys were never heard from again. A massive 15,000-mile search was conducted, but sadly, nothing was found. One year later, the pair's boat was found off the coast of Bermuda with a broken iPhone and some personal effects left inside. One of the most popular and bizarre theories trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charles Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. In 1945, five TBF Avenger aircraft took flight for a routine training exercise around the Bermuda Triangle. In the middle of the exercise, the planes were struck by intense rain and heavy winds, despite the clear weather forecast. The pilots became extremely disoriented and radioed the base to report that their navigational equipment had stopped working. The last thing the base heard was, when the first plane drops below 10 gallons, we'll all go down together, and then static. 
the five planes and their 14 crew members were never seen or heard from again. On his very first voyage to the New World in 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed through the Bermuda Triangle. Columbus reported that one night, when he was on the deck of the ship, he noticed a giant light appear in the distance, unlike anything he had ever seen before. Columbus looked at his compass for direction, and it gave off erratic readings. You might have noticed that the Bermuda Triangle doesn't appear on any world map. This is because official institutions refuse to acknowledge that the area actually exists. A popular theory suggests that rogue waves are responsible for the many disappearances. Rogue waves are called extreme storm waves by scientists. They occur when different weather patterns take place at the same time and cause large unexpected waves. Witnesses say that the waves look like giant walls of water. These waves could explain why ships go down fast and without leaving any trace. The Bermuda Triangle is home to some pretty intense and unexpected weather. Storms build up quickly and unexpectedly, then disappear soon after. If you blink, you might miss it. This could explain why few distress signals are issued. Pilots and sailors never saw the weather coming. No one knows exactly how many ships and planes have disappeared in the Bermuda Triangle. The rough estimate is 50 ships and 20 planes. Most of the time, the disappearances had no explanation and no wreckage has ever been left behind. Another bizarre theory trying to solve the Bermuda Triangle mystery comes from Charlie Berlitz. He insists that the area is home to the lost city of Atlantis. The missing ships and planes and malfunctioning equipment, according to him, were all caused by rays of energy let out by the special energy crystals that power Atlantis. While this sounds silly, Berlitz's theory was convincing enough that over 20 million people bought his book worldwide. In the year 1800, a large sailing vessel called the USS Pickering departed from the U.S. on its way to the West Indies. The ship sailed into the Bermuda Triangle along with its 90-man crew and was never heard from again. The USS Pickering was the first ever confirmed ship to vanish in the Bermuda Triangle. It's believed that the ship was taken out by a storm, but because no wreckage was ever found, we'll never know for sure. When the TBF Avenger planes went missing, a massive search operation was conducted. Boats and planes searched the Bermuda Triangle for any signs of the aircraft. One of the boats searching was a PBM-5 Mariner airboat. The airboat took flight at 7.27 p.m. and called in a routine radio message three minutes later. Then, it was never heard from again. No trace was ever found of the rescue airboat or the five Avenger aircraft. An enormous investigation was launched into the disappearance of all these vehicles, but nothing was ever discovered. This particular area of the ocean is one of the most heavily traveled shipping routes in the world. Some skeptics believe that this fact solves the mystery. Statistically, the busier the area, the higher the frequency of accidents and disappearances. While this makes sense, it's not the frequency of disappearances that's responsible for the mystery of the Bermuda Triangle. It's the lack of explanation or wreckage found. On the ocean floor, decomposing organisms let off large concentrations of methane gas that gets trapped under the water. This gas can build up until, boom, it ruptures. The gas surges up to the surface and erupts. If a ship was in the area of one of these ruptures, the water would become much less dense and cause the ship to sink rapidly and without warning. Scientists believe this could be the cause of the many disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle. While this theory makes a lot of sense, it doesn't seem too likely. The U.S. Geological Survey has stated that no large releases of gas are believed to have occurred in this area for the past 15,000 years. The ocean floor is made of rocks containing a lot of magnetite. It's more like iron. Magnetic fields react to high concentrations of magnetite on the ocean floor, which may start a sort of conflict between the two. It can often lead to various weather anomalies and, as a result, navigation issues. And naturally, any changes in the ocean floor or the Earth's magnetic fields influence the Bermuda Triangle a lot. Since the magnetic field is constantly moving, it might be also taking the Bermuda Triangle with it. Now that people know where the triangle is, it's easy to avoid it. 
It supposedly moves eastward together with the magnetic poles. But scientists still can't answer where exactly it will be in a couple of years. Some people blame all the disasters on the extraterrestrial paranormal activity. Others suppose it's all about raging natural phenomena. There's another triangle in Lake Michigan. Just like the one near Bermuda, the Michigan Triangle got its shady reputation for some disappearances. The first recorded one dates back to 1679. A large vessel, one of the largest of that time, set out on an expedition. Yet, once it got in the sinister triangle, it never came back. Much later, an aircraft disappeared in this triangle. The skies are usually very clear there, but back in 1883, some people witnessed abnormal things in the area. Some claim to have seen large blocks of ice falling from the skies, and the crew even managed to save one as hard proof. Meanwhile, the Pacific Ocean mystery area is another sinister triangle. Off the south coast of Japan, not far away from Tokyo, there's a sea where plenty of ships met their doom, disappearing without a trace in these waters. They call it the Devil's Triangle. Some scientists believe the cause of anomalies is the environmental changes. Also, there's a really high concentration of methane hydrates on the bottom of the ocean in the Pacific Triangle area. You're deviating from your original course and sailing in the wrong direction. There's the Caribbean Sea near the triangle peppered with small islands. The seafloor here isn't deep. The ship can get in shallow waters. And now the ship is stuck on a shoal and you have no idea where you are. If this were the 21st century, the ship's captain would be able to reach the shore using GPS and other modern navigation. But the most interesting thing is that the compass would work correctly this time, since the magnetic north pole hasn't already coincided with the true one for a long time in the territory of the Bermuda Triangle. The Agonic Line is somewhere far away from here. There are no problems with navigation now. But for some reason, this is where ships disappear. In fact, not just here. Throughout the Atlantic Ocean, there are places where many more ships were gone. The Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of such places. One of the main reasons why many ships are lost here is that one of the most popular shipping routes in the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. And the more ships in one place, the more shipwrecks. Simple probability. Then, it just starts getting weird. Other theories say that there's a space-time rift in this region. Ships and planes fall into this rift and end up in the past or the future. But for some reason, there's not a single proof of this myth. There's no reason to think that the rift is hidden somewhere here. The base of an extraterrestrial civilization is located in the Bermuda Triangle. Visitors from other galaxies steal sea vessels along with the crew, so no one finds the wreckage of the ships. This is also a popular myth that has no scientific justification. The Kraken lives somewhere in the Triangle. It's a huge squid that sinks ships and also is a legend that sailors tell each other. However, gigantic squids live in the depths of the ocean. They can grow to the size of a half a train car, but no cases have ever been recorded where they sunk a large vessel. And in the area of the Bermuda Triangle, they have never ever been seen. People in the past didn't know about the existence of these creatures. So when they saw them for the first time, they described them as huge, terrible monsters. Giant squids are some of the most elusive creatures on Earth, and scientists had to use sonar equipment to find them. They don't like to leave the dark depths and are likely to be afraid of the sound of any ship. So that should squash the squid as a suspect. Now by this time, you've surely heard about strange phenomena happening in the Bermuda Triangle, like strong waves or even a vortex from time to time. But there's another territory equally as mysterious, only this time it's on land. It's called the Bennington Triangle. Some have argued that there must be some inexplicable force wreaking havoc here in this region, responsible for disappearances and unexplained phenomena. This location is also connected to Native American folklore, which further adds to its mystery. For some events, there are perfectly rational explanations. For others, we've yet to find out the truth. But let's start looking at this region's history. The Unusual Triangle is located in southwestern Vermont in the United States. 
Before any weird occurrences took place here, the area was occupied by the Abenaki tribe, first discovered in the 1600s. They were indigenous people that we know have lived throughout portions of Canada and the US. Their beliefs were strongly connected to the local weather. The Abenaki people thought one of their major spirits, named Tabuldak, lived on the peak of the Glassbury Mountain. Since the winds here tend to be pretty fussy, these tribespeople believe Tabuldak created a dangerous creature made out of rocks on these peaks, meant to scare people away. Years later, in the 1700s, this region became the location for a town called Glastonbury. It reached its peak popularity in the 19th century. But even then, the population never exceeded 250 people. These days, it is nothing more than a ghost town, with only four families living here in 2000. Sure, on one hand, the town was flooded in its entirety at one point, so this may be a reason why people chose to leave the area. But there is more. To this day, many felonies that happened here have yet to be solved. One story speaks of a man that attacked a co-worker, claiming he heard voices telling him to do so. Another one tells the story of a man that eventually lost his life after going hunting, despite no one being around him at the time, not even wildlife. Then there's the legend of a local wild man who was known to scare people in the towns of Bennington and Glastonbury. Nobody knew who he was or where he came from. He just appeared every once in a while, dressed in a black coat, terrorizing people using various devices, and then retreated to the forest. Today, the Bennington Triangle is mostly known for six unusual disappearances. They all happened between the years 1945 and 1950, soon after the town of Glastonbury was removed from official records by the state of Vermont. The first disappearance was that of Carl Herrick. He was out hunting with his cousin near Glastonbury Mountain. He was never found by local rescuers. Then there was another reported disappearance, that of an experienced hunter and hiker named Middle Rivers. Local authorities have no idea to this day what might have happened in this case. A college student named Paula Weldon soon had the same fate. Probably the most famous disappearance is that of James Tedford. He was last seen on a bus full of people. Witnesses from that day don't even remember him exiting the vehicle. Paul Jepson is also known to have vanished from this area. He was working on his family farm when he disappeared without a trace. His relatives recounted him telling them he was headed to Glassbury Mountain Forest before it happened. Ooh, spooky. Is there any connection between these events? Locals believe so, and weirdly enough, it has to do with the color red since at least two of the people that went missing here were last seen wearing this color, it became a local legend. People traveling through this area avoid wearing red to this day, in hopes they avoid whatever creature or natural phenomena might be targeting this color. Timing may have something to do with it too. Most of the people that were lost here were last seen late in the afternoon, between 3 p.m. and 4 p.m. Bottom line. The most reasonable explanation behind the legend of the Bennington Triangle is its unusual weather. Even Native Americans that used to roam these areas thought that on top of the mountain was a meeting point of four winds, bound to eternally struggle with each other. Turns out there is some truth to this myth, as the wind direction on the mountain is unstable, making plants grow at strange angles. These conditions are known to often confuse even the most experienced hikers. The forest here is also wildly dense and filled with dangerous animals. Places like Bermuda or Bennington Triangle became famous for their mysterious disappearances, which may have some reasonable explanation behind them. But a whole train going missing? Back in 1911, a regular train was supposed to leave from a railway station in Rome, Italy. It was meant to reach the city of Milan. Surprisingly, none of the 106 passengers ever made it to the destination, and they were also never seen again. You can't help but wonder, were they really lost forever? Weirdly enough, it may not be the case based on some local folklore. As it was completing its journey, the train was supposed to pass through a long tunnel. It did enter it, but nothing ever came out the other end of the tunnel. Nothing was left of the train and it seemed like it simply just vanished into thin air. Out of all the people on board, a mere two were found, but they were quite unwell at the time they were discovered. Also, the story they told did not seem to make much sense. 
They remembered a dense fog that took over the entirety of the train. To escape, they jumped out of the windows because they got so scared. 15 years later, a story emerged about a group of 104 Italian people that appeared all of a sudden in Mexico City, claiming they arrived by train from Rome. Now, if that's not weird enough, this story appears to have been reported back in 1845, which was 66 years before the train had even departed in the first place. Turns out this whole story was nothing but a local urban legend that originated in a piece of literature, but it did get an amazing amount of popularity. Speaking of the Bermuda Triangle, I was, wasn't I? Yes, I was. It's not the only place on Earth where ships go missing. It's just the most popular. Whenever a ship happens to sink, you'd expect at least to find pieces of it on the bottom of the sea, right? Well, not if you're traveling through Lake Superior, located along the border of the United States and Canada. This one gained popularity due to a large number of ships that went missing while sailing it. It may have something to do with the stormy winds, similar to what happens in the Bennington Triangle. Of course, that doesn't explain why some ships simply vanish altogether without a single piece of them ever to be found, not even at the bottom of the lake. It does gather a lot of tourists each year, though, looking to scuba dive and see the remains of some of the ships that still lie here. The bottom of this lake even contains what's left of the famous SS Edmund Fitzgerald. Back when it departed on June 7, 1958, it was the largest ship on North America's Great Lakes. And to this day, it's still the largest ship ever to have sunk in the area. Why this ship sank in the first place is yet another mystery. Yosemite National Park is one of the most popular natural resorts in the world, but it does hide dark secrets of its own. Despite its beauty and abundance of wildlife, a total of 45 people went missing right here in this location and were never found again. There are even stories of people that disappeared from one area of the park only to be stumbled upon in a completely different location, with some of their clothes missing, no less. This hasn't stopped the over 3 million people from visiting the park each year, but many of them do dress in layers. What's the most mysterious and blood-chilling place on Earth? The first thing that comes to mind is most likely the infamous Bermuda Triangle. This area has earned its spooky reputation after swallowing numerous ships and airplanes, which then disappeared without a trace. But is this place really so terrifying? Let's ask scientists. But first, I'll tell you a story or two. One of the most infamous disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle was Mary Celeste. The ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean on December 4, 1872. It was days after its journey began. Captain Benjamin Briggs with his wife and a two-year-old daughter were heading from New York to Genoa in Italy with some important cargo. Besides the family of the captain, there were seven other crew members on board the ship. Days later, a British ship, De Gradia, came across Mary Celeste by accident. Strangely, the ship was floating under a partial sail. Everything on board was intact, There was nothing strange with this situation, except for one thing. There was nobody on board the ship, and the lifeboat was missing. There were no traces of people on the ship. It couldn't be a pirate attack since all the belongings of the crew, as well as the cargo, were untouched. Theories like an undersea earthquake, an attack of a giant squid, or a natural disaster can be ruled out as well. They just don't fit. It was a clear day. The ship was in perfect condition. Why would people leave it and never come back? Whatever the reason, neither the crew nor the lifeboat has ever been found. It was November 29, 1925, when the SS Cotopaxi left Charleston, South Carolina and headed for Havana, Cuba, carrying a big load of coal and 32 crew members. The story has it that several days later, the steamer ran into a severe storm, got water in its hold, and started to list dramatically. On December 1st, the ship sent out a distress call, and since then, nothing has been heard from the crew ever again. The ship was believed to have vanished into thin air, 
until it was found 95 years later. Scientists found SS Cotopaxi, and it turned out there was nothing mysterious about its story. At the moment, the ship lies at the bottom of the ocean, about 35 miles away from St. Augustine, Florida. Researchers are also sure that the ship did send a distress signal during a storm, which most likely led to the sinking of the vessel. USS Cyclops was a huge carrier ship that used to supply fuel to the American fleet. On January 8, 1918, heavy and full of manganese ores, the ship departed from Rio de Janeiro and headed for Baltimore. Being only a couple of years old, the ship wasn't supposed to experience any problems. All 309 people on board felt safe and calm. But this feeling turned out to be deceptive, because somewhere around March 4, 1918, the ship disappeared into thin air without sending a distress call or indicating it was having problems in any other way. In the history of the U.S. Navy, this case remains the accident that caused the largest loss of life at a time. SS El Faro was a much more recent disappearance. This cargo ship left Jacksonville, Florida on October 1, 2015 with 33 crew members and tons of vehicles, trailers, and containers on board. The huge vessel was supposed to deliver its load to Puerto Rico, but something went wrong. A regular tropical storm that started miles away suddenly transformed into a powerful hurricane that rushed towards El Faro. It started to circle around the cargo ship, making the communication from the vessel go silent. But the most shocking thing was that after causing all this commotion, the hurricane miraculously retreated in the same direction it had come from. Weeks later, after a thorough and extensive search, rescuers finally located the ship. It was still in one piece and sitting upright on the bottom at a depth of 15,000 feet. But the blood-chilling truth was that there was no trace of the crew members on board. As for airplanes, probably the most inexplicable disappearance happened on December 5, 1945. This case got the name The Lost Patrol. Flight 19 was the code name for five planes that departed from a naval base in Florida on a training flight. No one knows for sure what happened to the planes, but they never returned to the base. Most experts believe the commander of this group, Charles Taylor, got lost and led the planes in the wrong direction. Those were the machines that could land on water. So hypothetically, after getting low on fuel, the pilots could ditch and wait for help, rocking on the surface of the ocean. But it didn't happen. Although, two rescue Martin Mariner planes were searching the area all through the night and the next day. They found no trace of the five disappeared planes. But the most spine-chilling coincidence was that one of the rescue planes failed to return to the base as well. All six planes vanished into thin air, as if they had never existed. There have been several other plane disappearances when aircraft went off radars and never returned. In some cases, pilots had to send out a mayday distress call. In others, they disappeared in the blink of an eye when everything seemed to be going perfectly fine. Of course, over the years, there have been loads of theories trying to explain the phenomenon of the Bermuda Triangle. For example, some researchers believe that ships and planes crash and disappear in the area due to methane gas. And it has indeed been proven that in some areas of the ocean floor, there are massive storages of this gas. Therefore, when gas gets released into the water, the process can sink ships and make planes crash. Potentially, it can happen so fast that a craft in distress doesn't even have time to send SOS. The theory of a wormhole is preferred by those who love sci-fi. In short, a wormhole is a space-time shortcut. While the existence of wormholes hasn't been proven yet, this doesn't stop some people from believing that this phenomenon is what causes vanishings in the Bermuda Triangle. Another sci-fi theory is based on the interface of space civilizations. It's quite convenient to blame such disappearances on extraterrestrial forces. 
though why they would choose exactly this area for their abductions remains unknown. Water spouts, or simpler, tornadoes in the ocean, are said to have been spotted in the Bermuda Triangle. This weather phenomenon raises water many feet up into the air. Potentially, this can make a ship disappear with ease. The human error theory may sound rather disappointing for those who love mysteries, but some are sure that all the crashes and disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle happen due to people's mistakes. There are too many confusing islands that are hard to distinguish from one another, as well as difficult weather conditions there. And now, let's see what modern-day scientists have to say. Disappointingly, they claim there's no mystery in the Bermuda Triangle, whatsoever. The loss and disappearance of planes and ships is just a fact of probabilities. Researchers are sure that there's no evidence that in the Bermuda Triangle, mysterious events occur more often than in any other well-traveled large region of the ocean. The sheer volume of all that traffic in an area that is pretty hard to navigate gives us such unsettling statistics. But on a percentage basis, the number of vessels and aircraft missing in the Bermuda Triangle is the same as anywhere else in the world. And what theory do you believe? It was the wealthiest and most beautiful city ever to be seen. Stepping through its central gate alone would take your breath away with its elaborate decorations and towering marble statues. Everywhere you'd look, you'd find yet another marvel of civil engineering and cultural prowess. Yes, the lost city of Atlantis was truly the pinnacle of ancient civilization. That is, if it ever existed. Since it was supposedly swallowed by the sea in its entirety, it's no wonder some curious minds linked it to the Bermuda Triangle, another subject of endless mystery in popular culture, suspected of swallowing quite a few missing planes and ships. In the late 1960s, it's said that a group of treasure hunters stumbled upon the remains of an ancient city while diving in the Bermuda Triangle off the coast of Miami. Not only did they claim to encounter some intricate-looking ruins, but they also claimed that they found a glass pyramid there, larger than any other pyramid ever discovered in Egypt. A huge glass pyramid on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean? No, that story turned out to be a hoax. Nevertheless, we do know that strange phenomena are still happening in the Bermuda Triangle, like volatile water currents or even the occasional vortex. When anyone mentions the Bermuda Islands, this mythical triangle is often the first thing that comes to mind due to all the mysterious disappearances or unexplained malfunctions. But there's a lot more to this territory than one mysterious triangle. Let me tell you about it, just in case you might want to visit. For a time after its discovery, Bermuda was briefly known as the Somers Isle, named after George Somers, a British privateer and naval hero. But the name that eventually stuck was the initial name, Bermuda, named after Juan de Bermudez, an explorer from Spain who discovered it in 1505. It's the oldest remaining British territory overseas, going back to a time before even the United Kingdom was established. The island's geographical creation is also unique. Scientists have recently discovered that the volcano that had generated this piece of land is like no other on Earth. Since it has pleasant weather almost all year, it's a great place for golfing, sporting eight world-class courses, often frequented by famous golf players or celebrities. You might just run into one by accident, if you're lucky. If you're more of a music fan, you would be interested to know that John Lennon got the inspiration for about 25 of his songs right here on this island, including classics such as Watching the Wheels, Woman, and Just Like Starting Over. Bermuda's official online travel guide even provides a Lennon-inspired itinerary, taking you from the Bermuda Botanical Gardens to the Masterworks Museum of Bermuda Art to Front Street, a district well-known for its very active nightlife. William Shakespeare himself has an interesting connection with this island. His famous play, The Tempest, a story about a shipwrecked crew that end up on a magical island where they are tormented by an old man and his servants, was initially going to be set in the Mediterranean. 
But after learning about a real-life shipwreck in Bermuda, Shakespeare was supposedly inspired, and so moved the setting here. The island is also home to some fascinating animal wildlife. On hot summer nights, a special insect that glows in the dark, called the Bermuda fireworm, can be found in protected bay areas. There's also a unique species of birds here, the cowhouse, also known as Bermuda petrels. Believed to be extinct for about 300 years, they were rediscovered back in the 1950s, and a sanctuary was built for their protection. Currently, there are about 300 of these birds in Bermuda, total. Some of the first sailors to end up on the island at times reported strange sounds coming from inland and the surrounding waters after sunset. They even described what they heard as children screaming. So, of course, they thought it must have been because of witches or sea monsters. It took a little more time and research to figure out the sounds were coming from the cow house. These birds emit a very specific sound that can be easily confused with distressed human noises. Just as the Netherlands are famous for their tulips and Brazil for its coffee, Bermuda is well known for, drum roll please, onions. Yes, Bermuda used to export an amazing amount of onions back in the day, and the general quality of the vegetables produced here is said to be very high. Bermudians, that's how people living in Bermuda are called, are so proud of their onion heritage that when the clock strikes 12 on New Year's, a giant-sized onion decorated with beautiful lights is dropped in St. George's Town Square to usher in a new year. This is a big part of Bermudian tradition as their onion heritage is a point of pride for the Bermudian people. The community of Bermuda is known to be tight-knit and to be very friendly and sociable. It's common to say hi to everyone on the street, even if you aren't properly introduced. Not greeting people when entering a shop or jumping into a bus is actually considered rude, so be sure to get accustomed to locals saying hello when paying a visit. Another fascinating aspect of Bermuda is its architecture. The houses are all painted in bright, zesty colors. Bermudians take very good care of their homes, even repainting them every four to five years. And they can even choose the color of their house without any limits. The roofs, however, are a completely different story. When visiting, you will notice that they are all white and terraced. Here's why. Since there is no public water system in Bermuda, people living here have to collect their own water. And that's what the roofs are for. Rainwater is collected on the roofs and then funneled into water tanks for storage and future use. That's why it's so important that the roofs remain white. Not only is it much easier to spot debris on a white surface, but the white cement also helps with sanitizing the water. What about transportation? Well, only residents can drive a car here, and only a single car is permitted per household in terms of ownership. So if your trip itinerary includes renting a car, you may want to rethink it. If riding a bus is not your preference, there's always the option of renting a scooter. You just have to remember to drive on the left side of the road. It is a British colony after all. This wonderful location is also one of the few places on Earth with pink, sandy beaches. Because it's surrounded by coral reefs that are responsible for the special red pigment, Bermuda is home to some of the most spectacularly colored beaches in the world, such as Horseshoe Bay Beach, West Whale Bay, or South Shore Park. For those interested in more of a culinary experience, Bermuda has some interesting local dishes to explore. Its geographical location and the fact that it's surrounded by water mean that most local courses are based on fish and seafood. Here you can get a nice codfish breakfast, a Bermuda fish cake, or their famous Hoppin' John. A dish made with black-eyed peas, sliced sausage, bacon or chicken, Bermuda onion of course, and some brown rice, often seasoned with garlic and thyme. They do this last one for special occasions, like in January, during the Bermuda Restaurant Weeks, a culinary festival that you'd better not miss if you love a good feast. For a place to chill with a fantastic view, Bermuda offers two historic lighthouses, each with its own delightful peculiarities. To get to Gibbs Hill Lighthouse, for example, you would have to make a long pilgrimage up 185 steps. There's no elevator to get you there, so be sure you're properly hydrated before starting the journey. The panoramic view of the ocean, however, will make up for all the effort. There is also St. David's Lighthouse, which is known as an ideal spot for whale watching. Particularly in March and April, humpback whales generally pass through these waters as they travel north to their feeding grounds in Canada. 
The National Museum of Bermuda also provides an array of unique experiences, such as the Dolphin Quest. Through this program, tourists have the opportunity to view, meet, and interact with dolphins in a sheltered, natural ocean lagoon environment. Searching for the best hidden Instagrammable spots? Then Crystal and Fantasy Caves is the place for you. They were actually discovered by accident in 1907. Two young boys, Carl Gibbons and Edgar Hollis, lost their ball while playing cricket. When one of the boys went down a hole to get the ball back, he discovered this magical place full of crystal formations surrounding a beautiful lake. Crystal and Fantasy Caves attract a huge number of tourists each year, and through a number of recently constructed bridges, they are now more easily accessible. Be sure to wear comfortable shoes, though. There's lots of other geographic, historic, and cultural attractions I could talk about, but I think you get the gist. Bermuda is a lovely and vibrant island paradise that offers so much more than conspiracy theories about missing planes and lost cities. The weather is pleasant, the people are friendly, and there's so much to do on this beautiful island. So what are you waiting for? Book a flight today! <laughs> Just a suggestion, of course. More than 50 ships and 20 planes have disappeared here since the middle of the 19th century. You won't find this place using an ordinary paper map, since it's not an official region of the Atlantic Ocean. It's just a small area of water in the shape of a triangle, located not far from the southeastern coast of the U.S. In the 20th century, this place became a legend. Some believe it's home to a secret base. Others are positive it's a time portal. Ships get caught in a strong storm and move to the past or the future. There's also a theory that the city of Atlantis is located right under the Bermuda Triangle. Its technologies create bursts of energy and destroy ships. Even airplanes have a chance to disappear in this area. All this has gone so far that if something strange happens in the ocean, everyone thinks it's somehow connected with the Bermuda Triangle. The fear of the triangle has been made popular through books and movies. Directors, writers, and journalists like to use this theme. But in their works, you only see a few correct answers. You can find the truth about this place yourself if you look closely. But first, let's refute the weakest theories. Space objects, Atlantis, time travel, all these myths appeared in the middle of the 20th century. There weren't any records about mysterious phenomena before this time. People just noted that a lot of ships were sinking here. But then, one author wrote a book about Atlantis lying in the waters of the Triangle. The author didn't provide any evidence, but he described this hypothesis very convincingly. People read it and liked it. The human psyche likes to read something secret. When you learn something that no one knows about, it makes you feel special. And, of course, you begin to believe in this secret. So, this was one reason why the Bermuda Triangle book has become so popular. It brought the author a lot of money, and other people also wanted to enrich themselves the same way. Some other fantastic theories about time travel and secret bases have appeared since then. After that, people started making documentaries. All those works devoted to the mystical nature of the Triangle were based not on real facts, but on theories from other books. It's impossible to find the truth in this chaos. Some people like to learn secrets, even if they're fake. But you can always find the truth if you really want. Just take any myth and try to find sources proving its reality. Most likely, you'll find nothing but non-scientific books and movies. There are also more realistic things about the Triangle, but they are no less interesting. One hypothesis says that ships disappear there because of methane. Deposits of this gas are under the seabed of this region. Sometimes it releases from there and rises to the surface. As soon as methane comes into contact with water, it takes the form of giant bubbles. Then these bubbles foam the water and create large waves that flip the ships. This theory is quite real, and such a natural phenomenon exists, but not in the Bermuda Triangle. None of the numerous studies have confirmed the presence of an increased concentration of this gas here. The last methane eruption occurred here about 15,000 years ago. Another realistic theory is rogue waves. They form without storms and winds. The calm water surface can transform into a big wave, the height of a five-story building, in three seconds. It sinks a ship and then quickly disappears. The sea is calm again 
as if there were no waves at all. Some scientists believe a surface sea current colliding with a strong headwind creates this phenomenon. But some recorded cases involved no wind. Another version says the wave is born thanks to the collision of warm and cold currents. But the most exciting theory talks about kinetic vampirism that forms the waves. Under certain natural conditions, waves get the ability to exchange kinetic energy. And among all the waves, there will be the biggest, the vampire one. It absorbs the energy from all the others. When the power is accumulated, the vampire wave splashes it out. This explains the force of the impact and its sudden disappearance. All theories seem logical, but scientists still can't figure out the nature of this phenomenon. Yes, rogue waves can carry ships underwater, but not only in the Bermuda Triangle. They rarely appear in all the waters of the world's oceans. So let's move on to the next theory. Some of those who sailed through this place reported their navigation devices had become unstable. The compass and electronics broke down. The signal and radio communications were lost. We need to look at the triangle from space to find out the reason. If you use special sensors and devices, you'll see that the Earth's magnetic field is weakened above the Bermuda Triangle. This field is a shield that protects us from solar radiation. The ISS astronauts said that the triangle gets more of the sun's particles than any other part of the planet. Therefore, electronics are unstable in this area. But such failures don't occur with satellites and other space objects flying within our planet's atmosphere. Areas with a weakened magnetic field appear all over the world, and they hardly ever disrupt navigation. This means that ships and planes work stably in such conditions. But all the same, a compass doesn't work correctly in the triangle area. Could it be that some magnetic anomaly affects the navigation systems? This theory was quickly refuted. Scientists regularly check the magnetic map of this region and don't find any deviations from the norm. The reason for the unstable functioning of a compass is not an anomaly. The Bermuda Triangle is one of the few places on the planet where the true north and magnetic poles coincide. True north is the geographical north pole. The magnetic pole is constantly moving around the globe directly to the north. Sometimes these poles collide and cause such a phenomenon as agonic lines. If you fall under this line, your compass will behave strangely and won't point you to the true north. That's why so many ships disappeared in this place at the beginning of the 20th century. People used an ordinary compass. They didn't have modern navigation technologies and the misfunctioning of the compass could have led to disastrous consequences. Imagine that you're a ship's captain in, let's say, 1901. Your compass is guiding your way. You know you always need to sail north to get to land. Then you get into the Bermuda Triangle. You look at the compass and notice the arrow position has slightly changed. Now you need to move in another direction. This direction is the wrong one, but you don't know about it yet. You take the wrong path and end up in the Caribbean region. This area is full of tiny islands, and the seabed is not deep here. Your ship gets on a shoal. You're stuck and have no idea where you are. That's how some ships disappeared in this region. But if you had GPS, you wouldn't have lost your route and would have sailed safely to land. By the way, now in the 21st century, you can use a compass here without problems since the magnetic North Pole doesn't meet the true one on the territory of the Bermuda Triangle anymore. The agonic lines are somewhere else right now. But still, for some reason, ships get lost here. And now we come to the most unexpected solution to the Bermuda Triangle problem. Yes, boats sometimes disappear in this region. And the reason for this is... Water, ocean, nature, call it whatever you want. Unfortunately, ships sink all over the world. Don't be afraid of just one triangle. There are places in the Atlantic Ocean territory where more boats disappear, and the Bermuda Triangle is not even in the top 10 of them. But why does no one know about them? Well, it's because people wrote fairy tales about one particular place. One of the most popular ship routes of the Atlantic passes through the Bermuda Triangle. Can you guess where most shipwrecks occur statistically? In a place with many sailing ships. That is, in this region. The only true statement about the Bermuda Triangle is frequent storms. 
but even bad weather and a raging sea doesn't always sink ships. Also, hurricanes often form in the Triangle Territory. The Bermuda region has high atmospheric pressure. This pressure diverts storm clouds away towards the Triangle. Strong winds and large waves can sink ships, and lightning flashes can damage planes, but this is not unique. So don't blame the Triangle for all the problems. It's a beautiful and picturesque place that attracts many tourists. What's the most mysterious and blood-chilling place on Earth? The first thing that comes to mind is most likely the infamous Bermuda Triangle. This area has earned its spooky reputation after swallowing numerous ships and airplanes, which then disappeared without a trace. But is this place really so terrifying? Let's ask scientists. But first, I'll tell you a story or two. One of the most infamous disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle was Mary Celeste. The ship was found adrift in the Atlantic Ocean on December 4, 1872. It was days after its journey began. Captain Benjamin Briggs with his wife and a two-year-old daughter were heading from New York to Genoa in Italy with some important cargo. Besides the family of the captain, there were seven other crew members on board the ship. Days later, a British ship, De Gradia, came across Mary Celeste by accident. Strangely, the ship was floating under a partial sail. Everything on board was intact. There was nothing strange with this situation, except for one thing. There was nobody on board the ship, and the lifeboat was missing. There were no traces of people on the ship. It couldn't be a pirate attack since all the belongings of the crew, as well as the cargo, were untouched. Theories like an undersea earthquake, an attack of a giant squid, or a natural disaster can be ruled out as well. They just don't fit. It was a clear day. The ship was in perfect condition. Why would people leave it and never come back? Whatever the reason, neither the crew nor the lifeboat has ever been found. It was November 29, 1925, when the SS Cotopaxi left Charleston, South Carolina and headed for Havana, Cuba, carrying a big load of coal and 32 crew members. The story has it that several days later, the steamer ran into a severe storm, got water in its hold, and started to list dramatically. On December 1st, the ship sent out a distress call, and since then, nothing has been heard from the crew ever again. The ship was believed to have vanished into thin air until it was found 95 years later. Scientists found SS Cotopaxi, and it turned out there was nothing mysterious about its story. At the moment, the ship lies at the bottom of the ocean about 35 miles away from St. Augustine, Florida. Researchers are also sure that the ship did send a distress signal during a storm, which most likely led to the sinking of the vessel. USS Cyclops was a huge carrier ship that used to supply fuel to the American fleet. On January 8, 1918, heavy and full of manganese ores, the ship departed from Rio de Janeiro and headed for Baltimore. Being only a couple of years old, the ship wasn't supposed to experience any problems. All 309 people on board felt safe and calm. But this feeling turned out to be deceptive because somewhere around March 4, 1918, the ship disappeared into thin air without sending a distress call or indicating it was having problems in any other way. In the history of the U.S. Navy, this case remains the accident that caused the largest loss of life at a time. SS El Faro was a much more recent disappearance. This cargo ship left Jacksonville, Florida on October 1, 2015 with 33 crew members and tons of vehicles, trailers, and containers on board. The huge vessel was supposed to deliver its load to Puerto Rico, but something went wrong. A regular tropical storm that started miles away suddenly transformed into a powerful hurricane that rushed towards El Faro. It started to circle around the cargo ship, making the communication from the vessel go silent. But the most shocking thing was that after causing all this commotion, the hurricane miraculously retreated in the same direction it had come from. 
Weeks later, after a thorough and extensive search, rescuers finally located the ship. It was still in one piece and sitting upright on the bottom at a depth of 15,000 feet. But the blood-chilling truth was that there was no trace of the crew members on board. As for airplanes, probably the most inexplicable disappearance happened on December 5, 1945. This case got the name The Lost Patrol. Flight 19 was the code name for five planes that departed from a naval base in Florida on a training flight. No one knows for sure what happened to the planes, but they never returned to the base. Most experts believe the commander of this group, Charles Taylor, got lost and led the planes in the wrong direction. Those were the machines that could land on water. So hypothetically, after getting low on fuel, the pilots could ditch and wait for help, rocking on the surface of the ocean. But it didn't happen. Although, two rescue Martin Mariner planes were searching the area all through the night and the next day. They found no trace of the five disappeared planes. But the most spine-chilling coincidence was that one of the rescue planes failed to return to the base as well. All six planes vanished into thin air, as if they had never existed. There have been several other plane disappearances when aircraft went off radars and never returned. In some cases, pilots had to send out a mayday distress call. In others, they disappeared in the blink of an eye when everything seemed to be going perfectly fine. Of course, over the years, there have been loads of theories trying to explain the phenomenon of the Bermuda Triangle. For example, some researchers believe that ships and planes crash and disappear in the area due to methane gas. And it has indeed been proven that in some areas of the ocean floor, there are massive storages of this gas. Therefore, when gas gets released into the water, the process can sink ships and make planes crash. Potentially, it can happen so fast that a craft in distress doesn't even have time to send SOS. The theory of a wormhole is preferred by those who love sci-fi. In short, a wormhole is a space-time shortcut. While the existence of wormholes hasn't been proven yet, this doesn't stop some people from believing that this phenomenon is what causes vanishings in the Bermuda Triangle. Another sci-fi theory is based on the interface of space civilizations. It's quite convenient to blame such disappearances on extraterrestrial forces. Though why they would choose exactly this area for their abductions remains unknown. Water spouts, or simpler, tornadoes in the ocean, are said to have been spotted in the Bermuda Triangle. This weather phenomenon raises water many feet up into the air. Potentially, this can make a ship disappear with ease. The human error theory may sound rather disappointing for those who love mysteries, but some are sure that all the crashes and disappearances in the Bermuda Triangle happen due to people's mistakes. There are too many confusing islands that are hard to distinguish from one another, as well as difficult weather conditions there. And now, let's see what modern-day scientists have to say. Disappointingly, they claim there's no mystery in the Bermuda Triangle, whatsoever. The loss and disappearance of planes and ships is just a fact of probabilities. Researchers are sure that there's no evidence that in the Bermuda Triangle, mysterious events occur more often than in any other well-traveled large region of the ocean. The sheer volume of all that traffic in an area that is pretty hard to navigate gives us such unsettling statistics. But on a percentage basis, the number of vessels and aircraft missing in the Bermuda Triangle is the same as anywhere else in the world. And what theory do you believe? December 4, 1970. Pilot Bruce Gernand had two passengers on board his Beechcraft Bonanza single-engine aircraft, his father and business partner. They took off from Andros Island in the Bahamas and headed northwest for the Florida coast. Sure, they were in the infamous Bermuda Triangle's airspace, 
But this was a typical flight Bruce had made dozens of times before. The trip usually took about an hour and a half with no hiccups whatsoever. Bruce took off and started gaining altitude. Strange things started happening right from the get-go. At first, he noticed a small cloud up ahead, but it kept growing. Not from the plane getting closer, this thing was actually getting bigger in size. Bruce had to fly through it, and he came out the other end just fine. He gained altitude, and yet another mysterious cloud appeared. This one was massive, and Bruce had no other choice but to fly through it too. At that moment, it got dark as night all around the aircraft. But this wasn't a storm cloud, and it wasn't raining. Bruce was starting to get worried, and then, bam! He saw flashes of white light. Bruce kept flying for another 30 minutes when he realized this was the same cloud he had gone through earlier when he started to climb. But now the cloud was cylindrical, and the plane was flying through its center. It was wide and seemed endless. Bruce thought he could never get out of that trap. But a minute later, he saw light at the end of the tunnel. But all of a sudden, the walls of the cloud tunnel began to narrow. They were closing in on the plane. The navigational instruments started wigging out. The compass was spinning by itself counterclockwise. The walls kept narrowing, smaller and smaller, wrapping like a vortex. The electrical instruments still going haywire. Bruce was running out of time. He had to get out of this place fast. A grueling 20 seconds later, he burst out of this foggy trap. As Bruce described later, he felt weightless for five seconds as his plane left the tunnel. The clouds dispersed, and now the aircraft was in a grayish haze. The men let out a big sigh of relief. He immediately grabbed the radio and contacted ground control to determine his location. But when the dispatcher looked at the green screen, his face became contorted with confusion. Bruce's plane wasn't on the radar. It was as if the thing was invisible. But then the dispatcher said the aircraft was already in Miami airspace. Bruce was utterly shocked. It just couldn't be true. Remember, the whole trip usually took around 90 minutes. But this time, it took just 47 minutes to get to the destination. His plane didn't magically gain some supersonic speed beyond the model's limited max cruising speed. This was physically impossible. The dispatcher must have made a mistake. But when the clouds parted, Bruce saw that he really was over Miami. The plane landed safely, and it was time to try and solve this mystery. Bruce checked the remaining fuel and his watch. After a short calculation, he was only more confused. The plane hadn't gone through the amount of fuel it should have. Archive records show that 84 sunspots were recorded that day, as well as a huge solar wind. This would cause disturbances in the Earth's magnetosphere that could throw off the plane's instruments and radars. But so far, no one has been able to explain how the plane got to Miami so fast. Maybe in the future, the truth will be revealed. In the meantime, it remains